Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Iowan Adventures, a world created and ruled by the Fae. I'm not sure what this is, but welcome. Um, I'm Jessica. I also go by I Sneeze Stars online in places like TikTok and Instagram and all that other, you know, online stuff. Um, and I will be your shenanigan sovereign tonight. Um, quickly, I'm going to run you through our shows, and then I will let... I will let our players introduce themselves and their characters. Monday nights, obviously, the Iowan Adventures. Uh, Tuesday nights, we have State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign at 7.30 p.m. EST, um, GM'd by Cuddlesworth. Uh, Thursday nights, we have The Lost Continent at 9 p.m. EST, GM'd by Mr. Markham. And Friday nights, we have Legends of Kralis at 10.30 p.m. EST, a TTRPG created and GM'd by Talarius Game Master. And not this Saturday, but next Saturday, we resume, we resume, the, we, re we resume, we resume, um, our girl power mini campaign called the Moonstone Matriarchy at 9 p.m. EST. Uh, do not forget to follow our YouTube, our Discord, and all that other fun stuff. Daniel, please make me not talk no more. Okay? Never. Except for right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan. Uh, you can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I will be playing Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock. That's me. Uh, let's go to my... I always get this wrong. That way to Carl. And I just wait for you to say the name because I don't know where anybody else is either. <laughs> I'm Carol. Sure. Hello. Uh, <laughs> you can find me at Imaginary Carol on TikTok um, and Corner Carol on the Discord. And I'm going to be playing Gilly Galane, our uh, water genasi barbarian. James. That's me. Hi. I'm James, uh, otherwise known as Mazrix or Mazrix24, pretty much uh, throughout the internet. Tonight, I should uh, hopefully be playing. <clears throat> Our of Day's Ark, our human circle of stars druid. Um, if not him, then I'll be playing <clears throat> Varian Arbor. Uh, he's a sort of counterpart soul that's stuck in the body. That's a, a bit of a storm sorcerer, but uh, y y you'd have to tell him that. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> let's get into it, have some fun, uh, roll some dice, and check out what's happening in Iowa this week. Okay. So, last time in AA episode 67, Thawne, in our latest adventure, things got quite frosty when Varian launched, Varian, I'll be kind, launched a perfectly aimed snowball at Roy's head. Uh, lofter, lofter. Jessica, today I need you to focus. Get it together. Lofter filled the air as the snowy surprise hit its mark with spirits high and com camaraderie in full swing the party engaged in light-hearted banter sipped drinks and shared tales varian had them all in stitches recounting hit the hilarious saga of arev and roy's un unintentional unintentional escapades in getting thoroughly intoxicated in their youths but the jovial tea didn't last forever as destination as their destination loomed ahead, the captivating city of Thon. Thon, nestled around an emerald basin, captivated them with its breathtaking beauty. The city seamlessly melded with seamlessly melded together with nature, its buildings intertwined with the surrounding treetops. Guided by Roy, they arrived in their lodgings, the Druids Drove Tavern. Accommodations secured, they took to exploring the bustling city streets. The lure of shopping drew in the party, and as fate would have it, Arev's reputation somehow persuaded him as a knight of Rhea. Um, the potion merchant recognized him, did not believe him that Varian was supposed to be inside him, and tension escalated as Varian tried to quiet Damascus later on only to have the tables turned when Damascus transformed him into an unsuspecting squirrel. Meanwhile, Good Gilly luck. found herself... <laughs> Chip squirrel. Um, meanwhile, uh, Gilly found herself swept up in an entirely different sort of excitement. 
a charming encounter with a lady at a clothing shop led to a date and then an animated conversation dominated by Gilly's passionate tales of her best friend, Posey. With Thawne's enchantment all around us, adventures both quirky and heartwarming unfolding. Their journeys had only just begun. Who knows what other surprises await them in the city built upon the emerald dreams and nestled in the comforting embrace of nature's wonders. Now, do you want to roll for me, James, to see who you are today? I would love that. Fingers crossed. Get my lovely uh, DM Denial made uh, beautiful liquid core starry night dice. <laughs> Um, just, just putting this out there into the universe with how beautiful that is. If my camera will ever focus, um, I painted it by hand and I also sit like, I also, um, wore it down. What are those? Sanded it. It, His came out the best. Everyone else is so lopsided. (laughs) I'm a big fan of mine. I'm very, very happy. Um, that being said. With a fantastic 11, <laughs> I will barely wake up as a rev. But you do. You will be a rev today, and it is an important day to be a rev. A rev. While you sleep. Your eyes close, as Varian, and when you open them, you find yourself standing in a beautiful, lush jungle garden, the sun shining down on you. The air is filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers. The beauty of the garden is almost unreal. Your eyes take in everything around you. The azure blue sky, streaked with white clouds, the bright green grass, which lightly sways in the breeze. In the distance, you see a figure approaching. As she draws near, you realize that it is Vara the goddess of summer herself, looking as radiant as ever. With her short, fiery red hair bouncing with every step, she is wearing a flowing white dress that seems to glow in the sunlight. Her eyes are warm and kind. As she smiles at you, you feel a sense of peace and joy wash over you. She takes your hand and leads you through the garden, pointing out various plants and flowers that grow. There... uh, that grow there until you find yourself standing at the edge of a familiar looking lake with green water. She smiles at you softly, holds your hands in hers, and for a moment, you just be, before she sighs deeply and gently pulls away from you. The The peaceful mood of your dream fades and sorrow begins to take hold. She is, you can feel, remorseful, looking around. What do you do? So she's, she's pulled away from me, but she's, she's still here, correct? Mm-hmm. She's just sort of taking in everything. But everything's changed very quickly from being happy to see you to regret. Hmm. Okay. I would like. Can I, can I blend? Can I blend cantrips? Kind of. Like this is. Okay. So. I have both Druidcraft and Control Flames. Mm-hmm. And Vara is the goddess of summer. Mm-hmm. So I I want to like Druidcraft like up, up like a breeze, but sort of like control flames in a way where it's like specifically like a warm, caressing summer's breeze. James, this is your dream. So if you want to roll me I think you cast with a wisdom. Yes. Roll me a wisdom check. And we'll okay. see how well you pull that off. Uh, 
19? You can control your dreams in whatever way you please. Interesting. <laughs> uh, it, for the moment, all that is, is that uh, as I feel Vara uh, pulling away from me, because like, Rev is standing there and it is at the edge of the Emerald Basin and, you know, was guided here through her and then feels her retreat. And just with an amount of confidence that's that's fueled by this dreamscape, um, he pulls his hands forwards and just looks down as the wind licks through his fingers and goes, go get her, it's okay. And takes this little wind, um, wind-esque spirit, this summer wind spirit that he's imagining in his, in his hands and allows it to curl down his arm and just like gently blow around until it swirls around Vara, trying to encourage her to like come back beside him. You see that warm air flow through her skirt, travel and spiral up her, her hair eventually getting caught with it, and a soft smile as she turns towards you. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get lost. I understand the feeling. It's this space is perfect. But when we are awake, it is not always so. Mm. This space, this space, it existed once. Not anymore so let me she puts a hand out towards you let me show you what we did to this world hmm? and she materializes almost like a bench beside this water to sit on for both of you and pats beside her I definitely walk forward she's still got that like air of melancholy about her and she goes you know after after we lost Demina and Atma and then Beroth eh. I don't <laughs> Jenna I don't know. She abandoned us for a while. Vitor did not take it well. You know, he took his his frustrations out on bomb quite frequently. You know, and I I was always angry at that time. I lost my temper and Vitor lost his and we fought. I think um this is something you're your other half knows quite well. And she waves her hand. And in the water, pictures begin to take shape as she begins to explain and show you a story. She tells you the story of how they ruined most of the remaining of Mortal Coil. The god of winter and the goddess of summer clashed. The skies grew heavy and dark, as though they weighed down they, by the sheer intensity of the anger and the sorrow that were encompassed in these two gods. Vitor's icy blasts and snowstorms clashed with Vara's scorching heat and blinding light, creating a maelstrom that ravaged the lands. The earth trembled and shook as the two clashed, each unleashing their full power in a very deadly dance. The frozen ground cracked apart, while Vara's flames consumed everything they touched. 
Forests were reduced to ashes, rivers boiled and evaporated, and mountains crumbled to dust. Yet still, they fought on, their rage driving them ever forward. Vider's winds howled like thousands of wolves, and his freezing breath turned everything, even the very air, to ice. Vara's heat ro rose up like a geyser, turning everything to ash and dust. And in that ap apocalyptic battle, nothing was left untouched in its wake. And yet, when they finally withdrew from each other, they couldn't help but feel a deep sense of loss and sadness at, at themselves for their rage had destroyed so much of what they had both loved. Even though their battle was over, nothing would ever be as it had been. They had never felt such an irrevocable loss before. They were the last two standing. And because of that and their fighting... Everything had been leveled. You know that that's what Varian grew up in. The end of that, when they were traveling those deserts, is what Varian was born into. And the story stops. <sighs> We, we don't belong here anymore, I think. We had our chance and we destroyed it. No. Oh. No, Vara. I am shocked and I, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I don't mean to be insolent or maybe to speak too plainly with you. But that was just one chance. That was the past. You showed me a time when you and your siblings, the, the gods themselves, they... You were effectively at war. You had ideals and passions and beliefs, and they <clears throat> contradicted each other. And in your in your youth, you clung to your ideals. And I hope you don't mind me saying, but that. <laughs> the, the the mortality of that sort of behavior is very poetic for the gods themselves to have acted so mortal as to blindly raise the thing that they cared about while attempting to protect it and then to grow and and find that self-awareness that regret that you so clearly show and Varian moves to to turn uh, sorry uh, a rev turns uh, to that's when you know I played very in too long. A rev turns uh, to to squarely look through the stream space, and he tries to really look to like full on shoulder squared, just stand in the absolute full understanding of of Vara, and. He turns and it, 
he almost feels like a little resistance to dream through the dream space. He goes to like turn his shoulders and it's like she fights uh, you just a little bit. Almost like a, like a myriad of the hands of souls like are just like pushing on his shoulders as if they don't want him to turn. And he just grits his foot in the ground and pulls his teeth and then turns his body and opens his eyes and looks at her and just goes If you hadn't cared in the first place, then I never would have had a reason to fight to be where I am. You are the goddess of summer. You are the goddess of warmth. You are the goddess of... As far as I'm concerned, the goddess of belief in yourself. The goddess of the season when even those who typically hide away begin to show parts of themselves that would otherwise be hidden. You are not the goddess that tells me it's time to preserve the spark of myself. You are the goddess that tells me to live in my fullest aspect. And that is before I even knew about how your touch was affecting my life. I still lived that way. You are so very, very wise, my star seeker. And she leans over and brushes your hair out of your forehead and gives you a little kiss of your over your brow. And she you feel her pull you in close and hold you to her. She goes, your purpose comes and it comes quickly. You will know what to do. Once the time arrives, arrives. Hmm? Know that I am with you. I. He he presses his forehead. Uh, deeper against, um, her collarbone, and just as she pulls him in closely, says. I lived for you before I before I even knew what that truly meant. I know, Vara, what my life is worth. You have no fear. You don't, but you will. You will. You have now, I think. A key and a telescope, a looking glass. And soon you will know when to use them. Okay. I will tell you when. Okay. for the rest of that dream she holds you and you watch the sunset in this mystical dream land and as the last rays of sun slip into the horizon she takes you and she leads you out of the jungle this is as far as I can take you and she steps away from you and bids you farewell as you realize that you are waking up as yourself or of what do you do as she's pulling away before the dream fades 
uh, Arev gives her the Rayan Knight's salute. Which I believe several episodes I ago, I, no, I, I said was just a, a closed raised fist just above the, the heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I wake up and Im- immediately beset by a tongue just yep daughter <laughs> is all over you <laughs> I'm just like, uh, all right no uh. he in mid lick drops and rolls onto his back on top of you so that you have to like scritch him while he's on your on your tummy okay all right oh hey daughter I'm and back. then after a minute falls through you and through the bed until he comes out beside you again. I will never get used to that. All right. Uh, Boy, do you smoke coffee? (laughs) You say that and as you kind of open your eye again, a ball drops into your lap as he wags his tail. Has Barry had not been playing with you? Is it, like, are you just wags? <sighs> I gotta leave that kid a note. <laughs> and like, I pick up the ball of returning and just pause and look around to try and determine where I am. <laughs> I believe you guys are in your condo. You got one room, so. I like go from like hesitating and then go maybe I'll throw this outside Dodger you'll have a little bit farther to go you hear him whine you you know that the ball goes through walls (laughs) oh yes I do know that now Uh, so I, I take the ball and go Fine. And just whip it. <laughs> he takes off through walls, uh, at some point runs through Gilly's room, chasing this ball. You hear yapping as you wake up to a little ghost puppy grabbing a ball and running back through the walls of your room. I rolled a nat 20 on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wonder how this is going to go. And so... Um, I feel like if within that 20, if, if it's allowed, I, I throw the ball, not only through Caro's room, um, but it like, as Damascus is waking up, sails through his head and he, obviously he wouldn't feel it. He'd just kind of be like, what? A hundred percent. Right through, like, right through his head, the ball, you see it for a second, you watch Damascus as Paws gets out of the way of that ball, and a second later, you are bowled over as Dodger decided to become uh, an actual dog for that moment, taking you down, (laughs) disappearing once more into, into nothing, grabbing the ball, and heading back. You did that but on purpose. As he goes back over you, you say that, and as he goes back over you, he becomes but, solid once more and continues on. Expecting it, I <laughs> dodge out of the way this time. Oh boy. <laughs> you get on pause and you, you roll onto pause's tail and she swats at you. <laughs> Ain't my fault, blend the dog. She clearly does. <laughs> and you but she does <laughs> and she gets up and lays in bed with Faza, who has not started making breakfast this morning what uh, she's asleep what would what did you like to do um I am worried I will kind of wake her up by just putting a hand on her head and seeing if she feels hot. <laughs> uh, roll me a medicine track. Sure. I'm not good at those at all. Uh, 
Yeah, that's uh seven. A seven. Um, she kind of feels a little chilly. Maybe she's dead. <laughs> Faze. Faze. You all right, Tara? What? Okay. Yeah, what? Hi. Just just making sure it's... you're all right. You, you never sleep in. As she wipes a little bit of drool. I I had a drink last night and then everything was a little bit much and now then it's so warm and comfortable in here and then the purrs. Fair enough. You, you're welcome to sleep in. I'll just make sure you're all right. I'm awake I'll, now. Why don't you rest? I'll go make breakfast for you. Oh, God, no, I'm awake. Please, what? please don't touch the kitchen. It's mine. <laughs> that bad? No, 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 no. It's okay. It's fine. You know, I, um... <clears throat> She puts paws on your lap. I'm gonna go right now. All right, I'll. You haven't we'll touched see you out anything, there. right? I mean, I was gonna, but now I guess I'll stay here. But and you haven't. I ain't touched nothing. Okay, thank Which you. I you love left. you. Okay, and she gets up. Love you too, darling. No, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, kind of grab the cat and go. She is a weird one. Put it on my shoulders. Cat uh, shoulders. becomes a scarf around your neck. <laughs> Flops. Flops. Um, Gilly, what are you doing this morning? Mm. Well, everybody else is hanging out with their animal friends, so perhaps I will hang out with my friend the octopus. <laughs> you I wake up and he's already in the water. Money. Yeah, just splish splashing around. I feel like probably if I'm around water, the octopus gets to have a little a little uh oh my gosh yeah he's i forgot this... the word that i'm looking for a field trip <laughs> but not you know what i mean <laughs> he gets to have a, a little, little splish splash a hundred percent like when you sleep he goes nuts in the water and plays around mm -hmm. uh when you wake up he is sort of floating on the surface of the water and talon is standing on his head on his <laughs> head body is just like <sighs> they're talking in Sylvan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gilly's not gonna let them know that she is awoken. She's just gonna watch, like, oh my gosh, are my friends you, becoming friends? <laughs> this is so you're exciting. watching. It's adorable for a moment, mm -hmm. uh, until you you can see that uh Talon starts to get just bored and bounce starts bouncing on the octopus like it's a, a little balloon all right it, i i tell him i'm not sure if he enjoys it a tentacle comes up and just grasps on and just drags <laughs> talon underwater there's a moment of just silence and he comes up coughing like i'm, I'm an archway <laughs> oh dear well, our space can't swim. <laughs> he tried to kill me. Just a little Duncan. <laughs> Gilly's gonna go for a, a morning swim. As she is wont to do, I think. You go for your morning swim. A few laps, yeah. Refreshing. And then I guess just get out and go to breakfast. You, as you leave, you, your, uh, octopus. Have we ever named your octopus? Shoot. I think I said Otto. Otto? Which yeah, okay. particularly creative, but I do like it. Okay. As you swim, Otto kind of, like, uh, does these, like, circles around you. Eventually, at some point, latching on and lets you go as fast as you can while kind of just dragging in in the yeah the after the toe of the water it's like when the football players do the thing where they run with the like parachute behind them for like yeah. resistance yeah he's yeah. getting faster at swimming a hundred percent uh when you get out it wraps itself around your wrist and turns almost um ethereal in its little in its opacity you know what i mean like it becomes more of a spirit than an octopus so that it can come with you all right then breakfast time oh what do uh, we eat? 
dish. <laughs> you have no clue. <laughs> it, Presumably, you, you 100% have seen it just grab stuff off the table. Okay, and cool. Feed yeah. Just slice a bacon with a little tentacle. A thousand percent. Underneath and every time that it goes and grabs something, you see Faza just kind of eye twitch a little bit. Like, <laughs> if you just let me put the food on the ground for it, it would be fine. But it it refuses. Well, I don't know what he prefers. It's... He likes to choose his own food. Yeah, a hundred percent. It will get on the table and sit there and stare at the pieces of bacon and move ones out of the way until it gets the piece that it wants. The perfect one. The perfect one. So it's touched every single one of them. Exactly what it does. A hundred percent. Good, um, good vibe. Perfect. <laughs> good vibes, right? <laughs> uh, what, uh, what do you guys do as you all come together this morning? Is there anything that you want to do? Has everyone debriefed from yesterday? I feel like we did at the end, I think. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, talked about... Because everyone was disappointed in me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talk about your date and all of that. Um, yeah. I do turn to Winter once he gets there and go, so what'd you get up to last night? Came home rather late. I stayed in the garden. Okay. Went for, a, went for a fly. Is he telling the truth? Uh, would you like to roll hey, in I know that he wasn't her? in the garden. I know he wasn't in the garden when I went you there. You do. Later. You do. Do you say anything? No. I don't think so. What do you get? Hey, pal. 26. 26. Uh, James, what is Winter's deception? Winter's deception. <laughs> you just want to know the, like, the yeah, plus? Yeah, what, what is it? It's plus five. It's plus five. Let's, let's roll. Let's roll. Let's see. <clears throat> He was not. That is not all he did. I just raise an eyebrow to him and go. It's a real long time to spend just hanging out in the garden. Anything else you get up to you want to share with the class? Not particularly. It's not like oh. I sleep as much as you do. All right, fair enough. Keep your secrets. He shovels some eggs into his mouth. I eye him suspiciously. <laughs> he winks at you. I mean, if you want to keep looking. Roll my eyes. And uh, get to eating. Gilly also eyes Winter suspiciously. And that's not going to work on her. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing. Okay then. Just looking at my friend Winter. Is all. How's your breakfast, Gilly? Gone mostly. It's been like, like two some minutes, more? obviously. Oh, I would actually. Gilly has forgotten all about everything. Can't be distracted by pretty boys, later. but food. <laughs> he gets you a uh, tea. Out, guess. As you as you get some more food, he goes and gets like some fresh bacon from the from where Faza is making it, and like just puts it in front of you, and you get like a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but swimming makes me more ravenous than, like, anything else ever. Mm -hmm. So I imagine Gilly is just, like, 24-7, just, like... Starving. Ah! Makes perfect sense. 100%. Mm -hmm. Which is totally Human why you games. also have the, like, candy box. Yes. Just in case. Perfect. <laughs> I have my so, snacks. What's our plan today? 
heading to meet your grandmother first, the Rev? You're a Rev, right? Oh my god, yeah, Rev! Enough. <laughs> Good morning. I, I, you walk I, different. You walk I, like I, slower. Faisa immediately Let's launches it. herself into a Rev and hugs oh. him. Uh, hey, hey, little one. Wait, hang on. Coffee black, right? Please. And then she goes and gets coffee. <laughs> Don't tell Talon. Talon salts immediately. If you would drink tea, it would be better for all of us. Uh, he, a rev a turns bit. to Talon and he just goes, Talon? Yes. You know I love and respect you. This is the coffee ready. <laughs> Here you go. And then he, he he like drinks it, staring at Talon. He goes, "I I'm I just I'm sorry I just can't I'm so, I can't." <laughs> like drinks the coffee as you're as you're drinking it. He throws a little bit of a hissy fit and kicks like a glass of juice off the table. <laughs> Flies away. Leaves the condo completely. Just being a drama queen today. He'll be back. Probably. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, But I, I turned to Damascus after having a sip of my coffee and just... Uh, sorry. Uh, you were asking me a question, I think? Just trying to up? get... Wrap my mind around the plan for the day. Figured we'd visit your grandmother. Get the lay of the land around here, maybe. I mean, she's still like a couple of days away, right? So, how are we gonna see her today? Do you have? Do, do you mm. find some new magic or something, Damascus? Like, what's going on? Puppy. <laughs> Sorry, he's distracted. Hi, Dodger. <laughs> Dodger has joined the chat. Yeah. Uh, it does, it's does a little bit like Dodger. Though. Is Sorry, going far away. Damn, I thought she was nearby. So he doesn't yes. know. Oh, oh, my brain not working. Yeah, uh, that's very. In- dim- so a rev only gets some of the information. Uh, he's not like fully aware. Uh, he's like started to become more aware, but he hasn't got it all yet. When Varian's in control, so um, it's kind of like you know when you're like half awake in the morning and somebody's sort of talking to you, mm-hmm. and then you like go and you have you know your coffee or tea or whatever it is that wakes you up, and then you're like, "What were they talking about?" Hundred percent. So that's how a rev feels when Varian's in control. He feels like people are constantly talking to him while he is half asleep, so he remembers like the gist but not like the details is that the same way for varian or is it different no Varian's varian is fully aware fully cognizant fully, okay. and varian was also fully cognizant um before the spell that like before the magical effect that like made him showed up happened he was still present and still aware He's been aware. He's had a weird life. He, he yeah. Has, yeah, he's been aware since the moment of Arev's birth. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. He has been fully aware this entire time. Yeah. I would not a... want to be fully aware inside a baby. No, can right? you imagine? He, he's, he's like a 20 something year old tiefling male stuck in the body of like a toddler. Can't even turn over. <laughs> Basically, like, imagine if, like, a T, te- like, your imaginary friend when you were a kid was just this soul stuck inside your body that you could actually, like, see in the room with you being like, you know what? Fuck it. Go ahead. Jump from chair to chair. Like, make your parents' life miserable. Oh, my God. New headcanon. Okay. When you were a baby, you full, you know how kids see, see spirits? Like, you, you, they just kind of look off into nothing. He totally saw. Varian. Totally. Yeah. Adorable. Varian would make him stop crying by like doing like 
finger puppets and stuff. <laughs> Probably like like psychic prestidigitation and mage hand being ah. like be like, hey, look, mm-hmm. look at these shadow puppets on the wall. I can make like a bunny with a tail because he's got like an extra Ooh. hand and like just like Arev- do all that sort of stuff. Areva's canon was always such a good kid, right? Yeah. So you would wake up and like, be scared or something. And Varian was like, you're okay, kid. <laughs> yeah, he's just like sitting in the room and Arev would be like, oh, hey, mister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So we're still good. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after a while, you know, as you grow up, you you stop, you you lost the ability to see him. Yeah. Because like makes perfect sense. Like so it, sad. So, something that is always well, it, it happens to all of us, right? Like think think about just like in your in your homes, in your daily lives, right? Something that is always present. Sometimes you forget to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's true that's just fucking everything for daniel <laughs> <laughs> where are my glasses wait i can't find them oh can you see there must be on your face i've done this yeah Classic. And so that's basically like what happened and then like you know the teenage years started coming and the hormones and the life became too real so varian was sort of for- forgotten as an imaginary friend yeah but that does mean that the groundwork yeah. to like see varian is there which is pretty cool mm-hmm. <clears throat> that'll be interesting it has been now been established <laughs> yeah okay. as uh so damascus will then clarify what the hell he's talking about um and just no, she's she's here. And in fact, might already know that we're in town. Your other half ran into a friend of yours, maybe? A shopkeep, a potion maker. Maybe you know him. Seemed to recognize you well enough. Don't know if we caught his name, but he was gonna uh, go in. Oh, she thought you were cursed or something. He works at the Far Magicians. Uh, wait. Potion maker. Um, hmm. I mean, that sounds familiar. But <clears throat> I checked the notes on Discord, and there's nothing in the Far Magician of his name. Would you, <laughs> would you like to roll a history check? Uh, I'd with maybe... advantage since you've okay. grown up here, I would love to. Thank you. Uh, I'm this DM. I I rolled this one and then it like caught my other dice halfway across the thing and didn't let. It was like you can totally re-roll it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so trustworthy. Um, I mean. It knocked the other die into a worse roll. So perfect. We love it so much. Um a history would have been a flat twelve. Twelve, that's enough. Um, you know that that's Mr. Uh Luna Dream, aka Peyton. Our magician, our magician. And he's like sitting there like doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. <laughs> and going. Wait, Peyton? Maybe. Like I said, uh, I don't think I ever caught his name, but uh, I will minor illusion what he looked like. Looked a little like this. Oh, no, that's him. Uh, yeah, you're just gonna... You're missing the spot of it. It's fine. Uh, you're good at details, but, I mean, you don't always catch, you know, everything. Um, he recognized you and thought you were cursed or something hence the strange manner of your speak and you know person in your body and, uh, and then he went to tell your grandma yeah and uh Varian oh boy ran off i tried to convince him not to but so in other words i have to when we get there even convince both peyton 
and the eldest druid that I am who I say I am. And not Most some likely. cracked out version of myself. Yep, that sounds pretty right. much. I yeah. mean, she's a, the eldest druid. I'd imagine she's got some pretty decent, uh, she's good at reading people and uh, maybe she's got some magic she can do to be able to tell that you're you. Look, so, you're not wrong. It just... It's so beyond unflattering to return home and be questioned whether I am even myself. I mean, to be fair, Varian sucks at pretending to be you. He is awful at it. Yeah, you might want to give him some coaching, if it's possible. Or maybe become someone that's easier to imitate. I don't think that's... No, I don't think that's going to work. He can try to be Irish. You... Did you just cancel me to change my entire (laughs) essence of... Essence of who I am. Just like me in the middle, maybe. To be more imitatable. No. It's just an idea. (laughs) I mean, you meet Varian halfway, he meets you halfway. You'd be a... People can change their voices. Very deliberate Irish person. And guys, that's gonna be fucking weird, okay? Yeah, he's never mind. This way, his whole life, and then suddenly he's like, "Hey, dee 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 dee, potato." <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. That was a perfect <laughs> bar, uh, I didn't know how to do face <laughs> just <laughs> like him. <laughs> perfect. So that was amazing. Is that what he's like? That's pretty much <laughs> what he sounds like. Yeah, identical. So you're telling me? Oh, yeah. Hello, the, my knight. The, Your chest. Hello, Miss Lynn. <laughs> Sexy knight. You know, you might be stuck in a pendant, but I appreciate you. Oh, the feelings mutual, boy. <laughs> but so you're telling me that this. This young man whose soul is stuck inside my body shows up. It, if you had to pick like an adjective to describe him, you know, enthusiastic, um, uh, charismatic. I don't know what 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 adjective would you choose to pick for him? Flamboyant. Fla- fl- I'm sorry. Was that snobby? Smarmy. No. Sm- smarmy. smarmy. No, he's just, he's just full of smarm. An abundance of energy. Yep. He's a character. That energy is smarm. Adorable. So, I guess if I were to... Miss Lynn, can you say something for me? I can, yes. Say... Deedly dee potatoes. Oh, deedly dee potatoes. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> so, I mean, he might not be able to pretend to be me, but I mean, if I was to. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't see how it's going to help anything, is, is <laughs> where I'm stuck. How do you see you pretending to be him? solve any problems well it might not help in this particular instance but it would be good to practice as we've I, learned a rev is like oh. staring staring at a wall right now like while this is going on they're like talking back and forth and then he just suddenly turns to damascus and goes so the funny thing is if you had anything to say about it, uh, do you think perhaps maybe it might be behooven to the rest of us if I persuaded them that I am in fact who they thought that I was, and therefore because of it, when it came down to the thing, and then 
we had a conversation about the whether I was him or whether I was me or whether I was I oh, or I was Oh, shut up, he. Varian! And that's from your your necklace. Oh, wait, shit. Sorry, my little love. Oh, I like that. That's You're creepy. real good at that. That was actually impressive. Shit. <laughs> I mean, if you want to convince your grandmother that you're not a Rev, just somebody who's stolen his shape, I suppose... You could or do that. Hear me out. You convince your grandmother that you are a Rev, and then you do that voice for a bit, and are like, what? "See, it's just a thing that I do sometimes." He is a Rev. I'm just a weirdo. I. This has I mean, gotten away from us. A little bit. <laughs> I was just trying to say that we should probably visit her first. That way, we're going voluntarily and she don't have to send some knights to, you know, drag us in. Because I have a feeling she might be doing that if we don't. So when did you get that good at impersonating Varian? Focus Winter. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I forget I asked. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just listened to all of you and trust you all and you gave me you know what what i would call an apt description so i attempted i <laughs> just tried to picture what that would sound like in my mind and uh and, and did that i knights of raya are famously masters of disguise yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i always hated that moniker um but Master I, I, of the skies. <laughs> it's true now. <laughs> but I respect that uh, some of my colleagues were <clears throat> very good at uh, infiltrating their enemies. Now, um, it's not Damascus. It wasn't so much about fooling my own grandmother. Um, but, it, you know, just if the circumstance arrived where I might need to pretend to be him at least, I have a talent he does not. Uh, oh, no. it'll come. It could come in handy. It's an idea, at least. You never know. So, are we going to see the Elder yes. Okay. Yes. Do I wear a dress? That was going to be my next question. Are we like, is this an armor and it's weapon situation, occasion? or are we dolling ourselves up? I mean, that depends. Um, has anyone seen... I'm going to assume, considering that uh, based off this conversation, that we've made it to Thorn itself. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're in Thorn. Okay. Um, then I have a real question. Okay. Has anyone seen Elliot? Who? Who? I think uh, it's your scribe, right? Elliot? Elliot? Pepperet, he's a dwarf. He's but yay tall. He's actually kind of tall for a dwarf. Um, hey, Jess, did we see Elliot? <laughs> oh, a call a you don't know dwarf. who Elliot is. <laughs> no, I can't say that we did. But we met your parents. And why? What? We did. No, why are we looking for oh. someone named Elliot? Well, so I mean, he he may not be too too much to maybe notice right away, but Elliot is one of the most fantastic scribes I have even heard of, let alone met. And it's not just um, his ability to with notation; he's actually extremely creative. Um, he's he's able sometimes to 
pull together in his mind uh, scenarios and draft out scripts of conversation f- uh, that I'm so genuinely, I think if he wasn't in my service, he would be a, a, a well-renowned playwright. Um, but most importantly, because of that character study aspect that he has and the fact that through my service, he has met my grandmother I was just thinking maybe if you wanted sort of an in uh, or a plan to discuss things with the Eldest Druid, maybe you could talk with somebody who has that as a skill set of his. If you hadn't already. I'm really yes. regretting that I wasn't there and he was when you were at my home. All right. I think we just go knock on the door, maybe. Give her a howdy, Grandma. How you doing? You do remember this is the eldest druid, right? I mean, yes. I still think it'll work. Let's try So I'm just going to dress nice then. Yeah, let's dress nicely. And we'll go visit the eldest druid. And then maybe after, well, we'll deal with that after. Okay. This, this are we, and and break. And what? break. Let's meet back here and say, I still got to do my hair. So, twenty minutes, half an hour. Well, Forty-five minutes, guys. Forty-five <laughs> minutes. Okay, that's the quickest we're getting out of here with Damascus. <clears throat> Oh, that's great for it. All right. So you guys split up and begin to get ready for the day. Yeah. Um now I bring once my you're done. weapon in a bag of holding, just in case. In a bag of holding. Yeah. Okay. Lily puts on her least stained shirt. <laughs> <laughs> when you come out, Daisy like starts press digitizing it. <laughs> oh, she good. starts press digitizing it and just making you look a little bit neater. Um, too bad uh, Talon isn't there to do your hair but he's in a huff somewhere uh, as you guys leave right. the condo and step out into the druid's drove uh, can you make me a dexterity saving throw everyone ruh <laughs> ooh hoo hoo one Naturally. 21 21 okay and you 12 so i'm 12. the flip side of that 21 okay real so, spread as you guys step out and make your way into the main part of the druid's drove a falcon dives past you uh and you narrowly get out of the way except for damascus who, while th- the falcon is able to get away from Damascus, gets a face full of talon at full mm-hmm. speed. As he goes, mm. oh, t- what no ta- talon? Watch where you're going. <laughs> he has a hundred percent no remorse as he flies back up to play with Trixie. And you hear, I, oh, it's just you, Damascus. You're all right. Who's that then? Who's Trixie? Should I know who Trixie is? That, tell him shows up. Is that you? Oh, right. (laughs) (laughs) You, he sees you. Uh, arrive because you, you're you're out for me to meet you here. Hey, <clears throat> as he uh, adjusts his armor just a little bit, <clears throat> you look you. You look well. Talon drops onto his head as you talk. Ah. <clears throat> uh. 
uh to the y- yes so <clears throat> uh so so do you Callum well it's nice of you to see considering I've been sleeping in the in the jungle with this lot as he points over his th- shoulder to Bysus trying to find that path for you I um <clears throat> you know how much I appreciate uh, everything you do in for the service of Rhea. Um <laughs> he sits there like biting his thumb and he kind of like looks between Callum and Bysus and then Bysus and Callum goes so I wrote for you to come visit. You did? A, a, a couple of days ago? <laughs> I <clears throat> did did you forget? No, no. Um I was thinking um that it would be great to see you. Uh the tips of his ears go a little pink. It's, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's always a pleasure, Arif. So, uh, Callum, <clears throat> have you <clears throat> you seen anything interesting lately? Um, I, I you know Nimbus. Uh, did you hear uh, Nimbus? Um, there's a new. Uh, with the uh, with the birds and the the the, the, the falconry and <clears throat> um, yeah so, um, yeah you know it's he's he has uh been <clears throat> do you want to go to dinner with me tonight love Please don't say no. There's so many people watching us. <laughs> and he's turning, starting to turn red. I just, I turn and I look at Damascus and Gilly and I just say, did we have plans this evening to be somewhere? No, we're free. Not that I can recall. Yeah, Callum is starting to like I... wave a hand at him as he's getting a little redder. <clears throat> Just like I was thinking, maybe just <clears throat> no. I'm uh, I I'm free. There's there's nothing on the schedule. I mean, cool. uh, now there you is. You hear Balam. You hear Balam. You hear. Uh, you hear. Um, fuck, so many names, <laughs> but you you hear Bison Wait. snort from the corner. <clears throat> Shut up, you. <clears throat> We'll, yeah, so tonight, then. A rev, in spite of himself, steps closer to Callum, like within reach, and places his hand up, palm open, just rubbing it slightly through the, the stubble along his half elven cheek and curls his into you. Curls his thumb just below his his ear, and he says, "Yes, tonight." His face breaks out into this this like the most handsome smile you've ever seen from him. His eyes are filled with just relief, but like excitement, and I'll uh, I'll meet you here then, seven or eight maybe. Eight o'clock sounds perfect. Okay. Uh, Ed, he kisses you on the cheek. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you had, I'm sure you were. Yeah, tonight. And he, he uh, fully like stumbles away from you for a second. Uh, gets his bearings and is like, yeah. And then grabs Bysus. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my. Um, what do you guys do from there? I need the I I need the internet not to perceive me for the next <laughs> for the foreseeable. <laughs> Um, if you want, we could take our five minute break. <laughs> you can, you can, uh, depinkify a bit. <laughs> no, it's fine. This is, this is my natural coloration. I'm very tan. You're a nice, I, I'm a very, shade. I, I'm, I'm a very tan <laughs> Scottish human being. Okay. So <laughs> we love, is... we love. <laughs> Amazing. My natural look. I'm trying, I'm 100% trying to find a picture of Kellen so I can show, uh, so I can show Kara what he looks like. Yeah, y- you will understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, One sec. Uh, hey, chat. This is going to be my subtle plug for you to join the Discord because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes we share photos of the NPCs that we're talking yeah, to. Yeah, you get some and character art. Damn pretty. <laughs> I I may or may not have spent like thirty five episodes hopelessly recording. <laughs> Just in love with him, Un- unrequited. But uh, it was not unrequited. He no, it feels like it's not unrequited. No, 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 no. It but does. it was unrequited for a very specific reason, and uh, unfortunately, that reason no longer exists. Or fortunately, she no fortunately longer exists. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> they totally drama. Flirty flirts. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. And now he just doesn't remember her, so that's fine. Actually, no, he's available. Some <laughs> some of the okay, so some of the original Arev Callum scenes back from uh the Frosh arc are actually like the cutest things in the world. They mm-hmm. fucking are though. Um, I I kind of need to like go back and like find them and make clips of them <laughs> if I haven't because. Uh, montages uh, might ensue. They really were the cutest, and oh, I really kind of hoped that you guys would end up together anyway. Um, regardless of him being head over heels for his best friend, and that's not familiar. Yeah, proceeding right. according right. to plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a first date. It's end up together, but just end up together. We'll see what, what happens. I, you know what? I'm fine with you guys at least getting a kiss because uh, he's probably going for it. Let's be honest. I mean, he is a hunter. My, he my, is a hunter. I have it on good authority. You should not talk about other guys on this date. <laughs> yeah, do <laughs> that's, not talk. That's actually very good <laughs> advice. That's some advice so, I can give to you. Do not mention the exes. Mm-hmm. anyone else you're interested in focus on things that you share in common common interests and that sort of thing i was told I think to you yourself been on a date before so hey callum have you ever uh heard tale oh, of this like here. girl named amelia <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> uh just leave that one out i did tag you by the way Do in you know the I picture might have a child I saw it. Wait, I saw the tag. I haven't seen the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You, you understand now? Also, a very pretty bird. Yeah. Tri- Trixie excellent. is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, he looks like uh, uh, Sauron from the Rings of Power TV Kind show. of. Kind of. Totally. Yeah, he kind of does, yeah. Hot. Careful of that one. <laughs> Hot. Um, you guys head out of the Druid's Drove and into Thon once more. Um, as you make your way through the city streets, uh, roll me perception checks. It is not my day for dice. Okay. 17. 17. 14. 14. Okay. Yeah. With a 14. Uh, 13. With a 13 and a 14. That's not bad. Um, you notice that you 
you guys were so caught up in just being in the city of Thon um, and really seeing it for the first time that you didn't notice that as people pass a rev, they give him a little bit extra space. They give him a nod of respect. He's a knight and it actually, unlike Drax did, it means something here. You know, um, he is well respected and it was probably very unusual for him to be running around yesterday the way that he was but no one's going to say anything with uh 17 you notice that there are far less terraciel in this city than there should be and those who are still here are cautious to say the least what yes. is that? The what um the is. dark slash purple tieflings that were ah. getting their souls banished are like to ref- they refer to themselves as Terraciel. Got it. Um, <clears throat> if I notice people are giving me respect and a birth, and the Terraciel are being distant, can I sort of like lag or? Maybe just like try and catch one of them and just n- not even like not aggressively, just kind of be like sort of if they make eye contact, you know, raise a hand and kind of go like, hello. Um, let's see. You you like behind. Let me roll. Let me roll to see how this goes over. You are going to... What are you doing? I'm trying to persuade, like, one of the Tarasiel to... To trust me enough to, like, talk to me. Okay. Um, with a solid ten. I think they know your relationship with Phalus. And that you're cousins. Or, I suppose, you would be half-siblings now. Um, they stop for you. They are showing you respect and all of that, but it's very timid. And they, you, they don't say anything. They just kind of look at you like, yeah. So Rev adopts a very relaxed, um, open posture, you know, uh, palms, open but like down by his sides just just like trying to radiate every body language sign of non-hostility and 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 openness and he just looks at them and he goes are you all right um it's it's you have stopped a male tiefling he's about your height he has one broken horn and one very long um black one that goes back uh soft blue eyes a little on the thinner side and he looks at you uh we if i um have i done something to be stopped so no um I I mean it's been a few years since I've been in the city. Um do you mind you're not detained, sir, at all. And uh, no, I my name is uh Arav Dezark. I, I mm. don't I don't know whether my name carries much weight as one of the knights of Rhea, but uh, do you mind if I know your name? Yes, um, my name is Ashok. Asha. Mm. That's that's a very strong name. You should be very proud. Um, you, you have nothing to fear from me, Ashiok. Again, I, I'm not detaining you in any capacity. I, I've stopped you just merely as a, a citizen of Thon. Um, not as a knight. And I, I know, I, I wear the gear, but I'm speaking to you as a neighbor. Not as is, an official. Is there some things you need? Help, perhaps? I'm not 
currently. Do you do you have information you believe might be helpful to me? I I wouldn't even begin to know what to ask you, but if you believe you know something, I'd be all ears to hear what you have to share. Uh, give me an insight check. That's the 20. Um, he has stuff he would like to say. Or he's stuff that he is hiding. He does not want to tell you, though. <clears throat> um, um. <clears throat> you, Ashok, have you ever had a moment where you you weren't sure about a, your course of action? Uh, most days, sir. Uh, see, I have this, I have this funny thing, and I I pull out the sort of like brass brass and glass coin-esque shape of my condensed telescope mm. uh, and I kind of hold it up and show it to Ashiok and I go this um, this thing's a bit of a relic it was I guess the fastest way to say is that I inherited it and um Whenever I hold it, I feel a little bit more calm and certain about my way forward. And, well, um, I'm wondering if you'd like to try and borrow some of that from me. Uh, uh, no, thank you, sir. Um. No, thank you, sir. Okay, well... You notice him start looking around. Just kind of seeing if anyone is paying attention to this conversation. He's nervous. Is anyone paying attention to this conversation? <laughs> Let's see. Um, you haven't... You have not... You're not, your voice isn't carrying. You've just sort of stopped off to the side of the shop. You're not drawing attention. Um, <clears throat> I, if, if I go to like reach out and touch his shoulder, how does he react? If, if it's just slow and like, I'm not reaching out in any sort of hostility. I just like, it's sort of like laying my hand out towards his shoulder. Um, You can see the shoulder sort of curl in just a little bit, but he doesn't flinch or anything. He's just kind of waiting to see what's about to happen. So uh, as I reach out, if he lets me touch him, I'd like to cast guidance. Mm -hmm. Um, which I, I have the ability to do through my starry map, a.k.a. my telescope. Mm -hmm. That's why I brought it up. And so I just, like, reach out, and by casting guidance, I, I want to, like, have my hand touch his shoulder and then just really impress upon him this sense of my confidence in him. And just say, Ashiok, For what it's worth, I believe in you. And if you ever have something you need to talk about, you can find me either on my duties about Thorn, or um, I live with my mother's just outside the city, and you can come calling whenever you need. Again, uh, my... You, you see a spark of recognition in his eyes for a second when he puts together oh you're the one with the telescope or the one with the with like as he's putting together who you are yeah and he looks around and he goes you have not been here 
so you, you may not know, but keep your eyes open. It is not safe for me to be talking to you. Phyllis is gone. They never returned. If I can't, we can't be seen talking. My, it's... okay. Then have a good day, Asha. He nods. Before he walks away, um, I'm going to send him a message, which allows me to talk in his brain. Uh-huh. And say, I've traveled with the Rev for quite some time now. He's a man of honor who you can trust. If you need to turn to him, you can. And remember that there are ways to talk without being overheard, if that's your concern. You can always ask me to pass along a message like this. Um, he looks at you over his shoulder, kind of nods, and says, Don't make things difficult for Tersiel and Thon. Don't approach them in public. Understood. And um, I then reach out to a rev and say, a friend of Shuck's worried about being approached in public. Um, maybe if you need to talk with him again, we can use me or Faze as an intermediary, so at least it don't look like you're chatting. A rev stares so, so, so this is going to be like a bit of a different emotion. Uh, Damascus, for one of the one of the first times since you've seen like a rev in control. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, of the the body, when he you relay this information, you see that his free hand is clenched, white knuckled in a fist down by his body, and his face and jaw look. Just, you know that, like, formality that can be, like, worn on a face with, like, a very strict, like, like you're schooling your expression in such a formal way to, like, bite off the, how you're mm -hmm. actually feeling. So he, he, he has this look on his face and he makes dead eye contact with you. Okay. And then he turns from you and he begins to walk on further down the path. Um, as Ashuk is walking away, I tell him where we're staying and just say, if you ever need help, come find us, come find a rev. We're friends of the Teresia. You get, you, you see him nod. Doesn't make eye contact, just continues walking, but nods. Okay. Um, and you, I guess, continue on to see the eldest druid. Yeah. Okay. So eventually you get to the eldest druid's home. Um, it is a giant tree in the center of the city. Uh, the tree blends seamlessly into its surroundings with the natural world becoming just sort of, um, be part of the home structure. So the tree itself has like several entrances carved into the bark um, that open to the into these large rooms that have like been excavated in the to this tree. Um, multiple bridges hang above the tree, connected to the rest of Thon. Um, as you you get to the door and all that, and you can the the Eldestris tree is like. The, the main level is and you can enter at any time. It's always open, right? So uh, you don't even have to knock. Do you go inside? Mm 
I mean, I certainly would. So then, I mean, you've been there. She has, she has uh, throughout your life been a mentor to you. You walk inside. Um, the inside of the tree is actually quite spacious, filled with a bunch of natural light. Uh, the walls and the ceilings have been decorated with intricate carvings and symbols that reflect the Eldritch Druid's connection to the world and tell a story of every eldest druid that has lived here um the furniture is and like the fixtures are made of again natural materials such as like wood and stone and um even clay uh there are they're designed to like complement the curves of the tree everything is very organic um the first floor that you're on has a small pond and a garden in the living room space. Uh, the atmosphere inside is very peaceful. It's very calming. The There's a scent of floral throughout the air and, her, and herbs. And you hear birds singing and water moving and just crickets. It's very peaceful. And as you walk in to the Eldest Druid's home, someone is making their way down a set of stairs. Um, someone you know or of. It's Guy Arbor. So it would be Phelis and Roy's, and now yours and Violet's father. Um, he's the Eldest Druid's son. He's tall, he's lethally built, he's a red tiefling, um, chiseled features, very piercing gaze, immediately kind of draws your attention to him when he enters a room. Uh, he's dressed very finely in form-fitting dark, a form-fitting dark outfit uh, made of silk. You know, his skin is a deep shade of crimson, uh, which contrasts with the, like the long, lustrous, blonde Fabio hair that he has going on. Um, his face, he has high cheekbones. It's very angular. He's very, he's very um, attractive in a very, um, almost like he's a stat, like a, been a statue been made alive type. So st striking, very striking, um, and his eyes are the exact same shade of violet that your sister's are eyes are. Um, he has two horns that gracefully curve back around his hair, um, and he sees you as you enter the house and almost looks it almost seems to like take him by surprise for a moment as he Wait, stops it better <laughs> as he stops on the stairs before continuing down them uh and i will post you a picture of what uh papa looks like right now as he's walking down the stairs, Damascus is going to walk up to ah. a rev. Pat him <laughs> he doesn't have the horns on this, but that is totally what he looks like. Pat him on the back and just go, remember you ain't alone. And uh, give you bard inspiration in case you need it for nice. anything, anytime nice. soon. Because he notices you are a little probably perturbed. Damascus doesn't know who this guy is, but, you know. That's true, it would be. He continues walking down the stairs, his posture sort of, his shoulders square up just a little bit more. Uh, and he nods at you. It raises an eyebrow. Rev looks to the side and then looks back at the face of his father. And says, hello, guy. And uh, you see him 
Uh, give me an insight check on him. I'm gonna see how. Let's see how he does here in hiding this. I can that one. He cannot hide this at all. Oh, good. I rolled. You don't a, even need to do the insight. I rolled a net three. <laughs> okay, so he, you, uh, it's a very an intense and emotional, uh, moment. Um, you say that, and he goes, "Oh shit!" You see it across his face. He knows. And you see him have to like pull this mask back on to his face really quickly. Uh, and he closes down just a bit and he goes, mm, <clears throat> you're Ella's son. Are you not? And he's walking towards you. I, I, I stay on my ground and I look at him and I very pointedly say, yes, I am. Ella's son. You do okay, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. Okay. Um what are you doing here? <clears throat> what have you come for? I and, and my friends stopped in front of you. I and my friends have come to see Miss Arbor. Uh, she is resting. Uh, and um, my wife is with her. He's looking at you. Give me, give me that inside check now. 18. 18 uh he's looking at you like please don't do anything stupid but not like not with an 18 not in the sense that he's afraid that you're gonna go up you're gonna call him not in the sense that he's afraid that you're going to cause a scene in the sense that he's afraid for you Do you like, have... he's giving you a warning by saying that. Do you have a reason to be blocking our path to the Eldest Druid guy? Or may we move on? You see, uh, you see him clench his jaw just a little bit. She is ill. Do not linger. And he he steps aside. Um. Yeah. I'm wondering how much you would know about him. Probably not a lot. But you would know about his family at the very least and Roy's family. I, I might know of his like accomplishments. Like I might know his like professional history, but his personal history probably very little. Um, I'd you know, say, you know, he is, he's, he's a good druid. He has, he's very active in the community. Um, you know that he is Roy's father, your father, and, uh, you know, Phelis and Violet's as well. You also know that he had, um, he did have a daughter who passed away a couple years, like, when you were young, who would have been like the next eldest druid? Um, that's that's all you know about him. He stands aside. Arev gestures for his friends to to walk past and start heading towards. Uh, the the room that the eldest druid is resting in, and after his last friend has gotten twenty five thirty feet away, if guy hasn't left, 
and is still sort of just standing there. Over his shoulder, a rev will simply do one of those where he doesn't fully turn around, but like the person behind you like knows mm-hmm. you're addressing them. And all he'll say is, I know. And then I'll walk up and join the others. Mm-hmm. Um, Baller move. Baller move. Oh, man. Um, he's told you that she's up resting, so you know that she's in her room. And you walk away. Uh, okay. We're so, the stairs like, there was tension. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, who was that? Who was that? Uh, who was that, the Rev? Who was Fabio? Fabio. <laughs> no one important for right now. All right. Roger that. You uh, make your way up these beautiful wooden and vine stairs um, and get to a room that you know is end scenes. Um, the door is open and ajar. What do you do? Gesture for a rev to go first. You're a better man than me because I was going to start making jokes about, is it a mason jar? Is it a, what type of a jar is it? Are there fireflies inside? Thank you. Yes, that would be my favorite type of jar uh, for this. Feels room. very druidic. It, it does. You know, uh, it lights the it lights the rooms at night. Um, bonus points if it is uh, not a jar of hearts. <laughs> oi, oi. Okay, sorry. Um, focus. I've got the songs going through my head now. It's a good song. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> Sorry. Um oh. you open the door. I'm just realizing that would be like a really thematic song to be playing right now in the background. Yeah. As I as I open the door to like just walk in on my jar of hearts. Yeah, 100 percent yeah. That's our soundtrack. I will oh. show you the song afterwards, Daniel. Totally googling it. <laughs> um do you go inside? I me? Yeah, of course. I Arev doesn't think he has anything to be like as stupid as it is and as wise as he normally is, he's home. Mm-hmm. He he's not exactly being as cautious as maybe he should be. Um so I definitely think I would have just like what, like this is the hell this druid. I've I've learned from her, I've sat at her knee since I was a child. Like I, I I spoke to her about stars that I know that exist, uh, and she's just like, you know, keep dreaming, little one. It is okay. We'll go on. She a never to, doubted you to, to find your own stars someday. You know, like, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go find the stars someday. You believe in me? Perfect. A hundred percent. So now here I am as an adult, walking through this uh, door to go see her. And, and I, I th- and you. How sick does she look? So the po- the picture that I'm showing you guys is what her before you left on your journey. Uh the eldest druid, Ancien Armor Arbor, just naturally like she has. We even when you frail and sick as she looks right now, could, the moment you walk in there. She commands a deep respect immediately um, from both humans and animals and trees and all like. Um, the space that you walk into is both cozy and grand in the and you smell like it's filled with these um lined with like wooden bookshelves with with tons of different books in there there are 
herbal remedies all over the place. The air is scent. It smells like citrus and mint. Um, you know, the the floor is moss. And there is a giant open window that lets in all of this sunlight that seems to be that the the canopy above the trees have just naturally moved so that her house has this sunlight. Um, there's a plush bed in the middle that she is in. She is almost 7,000 years old. She's about six foot one. Um, fair-skinned that's been tanned from being out in the sun all of her life. Um, very light, long brown hair that has gentle waves that now seems to be thinning. And regardless of her still looking young, there are gray streaks through it that weren't there when you left. Her skin has become a little bit sallow. Uh, looks it looks thinner you know her green eyes are not as bright as they once were but she still dresses very elegantly simple but elegantly even as she is in bed with her covers up listening to another woman read to her, well, recite a story to her and this other mo woman is Esme Lavore. She is uh, a unique sort of beauty. Uh, translucent skin, uh, very pale, straight, black hair that kind of medium ash black, kind of that just kind of cascades down her back. Uh, her eyes are white as if she is blind. Um, on her shoulder, a raven sits. And as you walk in, it turns to look at you. And you get the sense that that bird is her eyes. That she can take you in through that animal. Um, she's wearing all black clothing, gold jewelry. She looks like she doesn't quite belong in a city of druids. And I will post a picture for you. And you know that to be Guy's wife. And sitting on the opposite side of the bed is a very tense Roy. That looks, he looks almost as if um, he's been stuck there for a while. Uh, what do you do when you, <clears throat> when you walk in? And scene sees you. And she, her face breaks into a, a gentle smile. I would immediately like to uh, cross across the chamber, mm -hmm. keeping like a distance from Esme, mm -hmm. um, but like circling around beside Roy and immediately taking a place. Is he standing, kneeling, sitting? He's got a chair beside her bed. Um, his posture is he's stiff as a board. His hands are in his lap. But you can see that he's kind of like picking at one of his nails as as covertly as he can. He is tense. I will, yeah, I, I, I will walk over. And if there's no chair beside Roy, I'll find a stool or a chair or, or something. And I'll just sort of like drag it with me. <clears throat> Again, making sure to keep a distance from Esme. But coming and sitting almost square across from her. Mm -hmm. And then I will reach down and wrap Roy's hands in my right hand tightly. And when then you, I... When you do that, you see the bird look at you and look down and look at Roy. 
and look back like it's jerk its head moves and jerks like it's stop motion as a bird is tend to do but clock that movement and you feel a tremor move through Roy's hands I will not waver and I will make eye contact with the bird and I say greetings And scene reaches a hand for you. It shakes just a little bit. I give her my le- my left hand. I-, I don't let go of Roy. She takes this in. You see her. So my boy. You have returned. Did you find the stars that you left to define? I have so, so many stories to tell you. So, just right now, please rest. Because I can't even begin to tell you what I found right now. You see, pure joy, just like a smile of joy, like when you say that breaks out over her face. She goes, I cannot wait to hear them. And, uh, Esme reaches, you see her sort of pat the, um, bed where she knows that the edge of the covers are and very dotingly pull it up over, um, over Ancine's chest before the bird looks at you and says "Uh, you are what is your name again uh the disiac the eldest druid is ill child should not bother her so right now and and seen. It is no bother to me. But perhaps I should rest a little. What do you do? Um, I'm thinking. Um, can I? What do I have? <laughs> doing the same thing what can i do what can i do um oh no Uh uh-oh uh-oh what a rev does not have subtle spell no that is very end that's very end so Lisa I can't. <clears throat> Faza does. That's true. I was looking at Damascus's sheet, and not Faza. But I don't. I don't think that that helps. That doesn't help me with my magic right now to to what get away with to? something. No. What are you trying to do? Let's shenanigans. I have to tell Faza to do something. No, because he's not telekinetic. So again, that would be. Just Someone like would have to know to message you. Do you want to roll an insight for Faza to see if she would know to connect to a rev in this no. moment? No, the person no? I want to roll insight on is SMA. I roll your insight. I do not trust this woman. I am suspicious I, I don't. of her. Um You see her as you're as you're rolling this insight. She moves her hands around the side the side table and grabs a glass of water that she has she hands to the eldest druid. Or not hands to feeds to the eldest druid to drink from. Uh 
before putting it back down. Like it. No nope. feeling for the place. What do you? Unfortunately, I only got an eighteen. With an eighteen, you do I have mean, a bardic if you want. You do have a bardic. I do. How much you is do the bardic? Have a bardic. I believe it's a D eight. Let me double check. I'm looking at Faze's sheet, not mine. Uh, it is a D eight. Okay. I could do it. That's why I gave it to you. Twenty six. I rolled an eight. Yeah. 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 Beating her by two. Bard's gonna bard. With whatever role that she has made. You aren't sure if it's deception or persuasion. Mm -hmm. You know that Roy is nervous right now. Okay. You know that your father downstairs was, was trying to warn you of something. This doting woman beside the eldest druid is an act. And she seems to have most people, minus her immediate family, fooled. And it's I I noticed this after she fed the water to Ancine, correct? You did. Um well, hang on. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Do I have it? Okay. I don't know whether this is going to help, but I look across and I say, like, while making eye contact with Esme, I say. She's looking off into the distance because she is, for all intents and purposes, blind. We all wish for Ancine to recover, do we not? Roy? Roy looks at you real fast and then goes, of course we do. So then, we can trust the actions of a knight of Rhea who was sent on a mission specifically by Ancine Arbor herself, can we not? And you see Esme, just the smallest little quirk to her lips. Of course we can, child. If that's the case, then with the hand that was reached out that is holding Ancine's hand, mm -hmm. I'd like to cast Lesser Restoration and end the poisoned condition. Okay. Okay. You cast this spell. Well, so, I, I mean, I don't know how this exactly works, because it says, I touch a creature and can end either one disease or one condition of afflicting it. The condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. What are... Okay, so it, you're ending a condition. Yes. You see, and I'm going to... Give me one second, because I did not think to have her character sheet ready. Um, you see... A, the smile doesn't go away, but it seems like her whole face is sort of tightened just a little bit. And you cast this spell, and... And seeing sort of her body relaxes a little bit. She goes, hmm. Seeing you again is a little invigorating. She's minimally better. Uh, okay, so my problem is I don't have greater restoration prepared right now or else I would have cast that. Mm -hmm. That is uh, something that you can attempt the next day if you like. Now, Winter has a necklace of prayer beads that mm -hmm. has greater restoration in it. 
Okay. Would it be possible for like, would it be a thing that if like a rev looked over or looked around at the group and was trying to like impress that like he hadn't done enough that maybe winter might understand roll insight these... for winter okay um insight for winter is a 13 13 i think with that he's he knows something's wrong. He's looking at you like you need, he knows you need him to do something, but he is not sure what. Yeah, that's fair. Um, shit. Well, then I guess I will have to not do what I was hoping to do. And that is sad, but fair. Why do you cast magic? child do you not think that these things have not been cast or that she is not taking the best health portions we are the city of bolstices and potions my lady it has nothing to do with the spell that I am casting hmm it has everything to do with my sense that if I didn't know I had done everything that I could have, whether it's my own ability or that of my friends, to aid anyone that I thought needed help, then I would simply be at war with myself. I did this. Because I would never forgive myself if I did not. You hear a little... Oh, like you're so precious. So precious as she reaches over and smooths Ancine's hair. What a precious boy. As a rev is saying that... Uh-huh. Can I shoot a message to Faza? You can. And say, Faza, darling, I'm real curious what this unpleasant woman is saying, is thinking as a rev's talking to her. Think you can take a peek for us? Oh, quiet luck. And have oh, her yeah. cast detect thoughts. Yeah. Subtle she spell can it. subtle spell detect excellent, thoughts. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, as she, how precious in her head, she, Faza starts hearing things like, well, I would have thought a knight of Rhea would have such better magic, as weak as his mother's. And she knows who you are. And she knows who your relation, what your relationship is to the eldest druid and her husband. And these are all things that go through her head very quickly before she seems to almost go dark for Faza. As her, her eyes light up just a little bit they glow just a little bit and the bird looks at each one of you and i'm gonna make a roll like that bird don't like the bird, I want to the, <laughs> bird. the bird looks at each one of you and seems to t it takes a second before it spreads its wings and flies around the room and it seems to almost hover over you Damascus and then Faza and then you and then over a rev and I can't seem to quite catch 
whatever it's looking for. And then yes, like. give me an insight or give me a perception check, everyone, as her eyes have done that bit of a flare and this bird has taken up as, you know, take to the skies. 18. 18. Okay. 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 21. 21. And I would also like to message Faza to end the spell if she hasn't already, mostly so that I'm casting a spell. And if it is trying to find a spell, he's Damascus is trying to draw its attention away from Faza. Okay. Okay. You do that. It's 15 from Marev and 19 from Winter. Okay. Okay. So with a 19 and a 21... You guys see just the faintest shimmer over a barrette that is in the eldest druid's hair. And as you cast that spell to tell Faiza to drop the magic, the bird lands on your shoulder before taking off off into the air again and landing and perching on Esme's shoulder. I was about to ask to use magic awareness, but that's probably, well, I guess it would tell us the school. Can I please use magic awareness? <laughs> okay. Where are you, what are you using it on? Just, um, is it just like in general for, how does that work? I, hold on. Uh, I think it's, it's in detect general. magic basically, yeah. For, yes, detect magic for... Oh shit, guy! Everything in here is is magic. Everything in here (laughs) is magic. But specifically on the creepy goth lady. On the creepy goth lady. Oh fuck! You get, you get um, abjuration. You get uh, transmutation. You get necromancy. Mm. Okay, so she's magic as hell, and also extra new fancy magic. Yeah, that's yes. very, very, very bad. And Gilly would probably know this. Surprisingly. Uh, you get... The room is filled with um, enchantment, with just every type of magic. There are magic coming from books. There's from little chains. There's from potions. The eldest druid herself lights up with a bunch of different types of magic, transmutation being a huge one of them for her. And then, and then, Gilly, you almost miss it. Some sort of necromancy from an item in her hair. Oh, shit, it's magic as hell in here. And the bird is necromancy. Ooh. Dead bird. Hmm. (laughs) So... See, and you, Rev, you still have Roy's hands in yours he goes I uh, have somewhere to be grandmère and he looks at his mother for a moment and waits for permission she goes well if you must I expect to see you home at six And he nods. Uh, Yes, mon mère. And he gets up and he kisses his grandmother on the cheek. uh, For leaving the room. What do you do? Gilly's trying real hard to telepathy to people that that bird is dead, but Gilly does not have to. You're just sitting there like this. (laughs) I'm not dead. There's no hell like bird. There's necromancy happening. 
Oh, is Detect Thought still up? It only lasts a minute, but ah. the mask has told Faza to break it when the birds started flying around. Is Faza still telekinetic? Can, they, can, can she still hear our or telepathic? Can she still hear our thoughts? She has an ability to connect with one creature, I think, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's a thing something. she has to actively do. Uh, as a bonus action, choose one creature you can see within 30 feet. You and the chosen creature can speak telepathically within five miles. It lasts for 11 minutes. It's a thing she has to like choose to do. One uh, shoot. It's not just like... You need like, to be more like psychic. <laughs> I... What? Can I feel like I... we need to step out into the hall, have a little conference, and then bust it. We need to get that telepathic bond spell so we could just talk in our heads. Right. Calms open. <laughs> um, I, I'm i going to try anything that's... something. Uh, can I maybe roll an insight check to see if, if Gilly's kind of trying to give us the eyes? Yes. That's true. Does she look can like... I... How a... do you... Gilly... <laughs> How subtle are you being right now? And look, Gilly is a lot of things. Subtle, subtle is not, is one not. Of those things. <laughs> okay, so you don't even need. Gilly's to... looking at the bird, looking back at. <laughs> All right, what are you rolling for? Yeah, I was gonna roll an insight check to see if I noticed that Gilly has something to say. Because... Gilly is you just skip that one. <laughs> I. I have message, so I can message her and be like, Aha. "You, you, are you all right? Let's go." That bird's fucking bird. necromancy. That and bird's that... dead. You oh, cast shit. that spell, Damascus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the bird's wings flutter as they, as its head snaps towards you. Oh, but did birds looking at you? But it stays on her shoulder. Mm. Okay, right now. Yeah. I was kind of hoping it would start flying around again. There's also something the about that the, she's got a thing in her hair that's lighting up with the necromancy. Let and me... the bird's head begins doing to like twist just a little too far <laughs> for snapping back. Okay. I have a bad idea. Um, I'm going to connect with um, a rev and pass along this information. Just go, Gilly used her sea magic thing that she can do. She's saying the bird is dead and there is something necromantic on your grandmother's head in her hair, maybe. If I Esme's can get head, all of us. In Esme's head yeah. or in the grandmother's head? That's a good question. I had understood it was the grandmother's head. It is the grandmother's. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I can get us all out of here, including your creepy aunt or whatever, do you think maybe you can remove it? At this point, Damascus. And you see the back of a rev's skin on his neck is beginning to let off these tiny motes of starlight almost like dust that you wouldn't you wouldn't notice at first but it's like the air around him is beginning to sense that his skin itself is alive with the transformation that he's about to take oh excellent <laughs> okay you what are you doing damascus I'm message, but okay. I'm waiting to see what a rev says about taking this. I, I am literally about to blaze open into my starry shape form of the dragon. Yilly's on board. You hear. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Perception check. Everyone. Well, everything. Well, 21. 21. 24. 24. The barrette that was holding Ancine's hair up 
is suddenly with it's not it's different with the 21 and the 24 it's changed um with the 24 ooh with the 24 Esme's posture and her dress have in like the blink of an eye everything seems just a little bit different like she might have moved and been put back uh wrinkles in the bed sheets are different than they were just a second ago and scene's hair is not the way it was just a second ago and as that you take that in as you as you take that in uh You and scene seems to gain this power that she didn't have a moment ago as she sits back, no, sits up, noticing that a rev is starting to change and this power and draw this power into himself. And she goes, What is the meaning of this? A second ago, you were sick. I am still sick I am dying Arev all mortal things must do that it's not my fear of and that power is leaving her again as she rests back but she's still waiting for your What you sense of me is a strength based off of your preservation. If you must die, that is a natural part of our circle. It is the barest of tenets that every druid learns, that a circle has both a beginning and an end, but that they are the same point the whole way of the circle because once it's begun there's no telling where the end actually is so each moment shares the beginning and the ending as soon as you begin to walk the circle you were the first person to teach me that but it doesn't mean that i won't fight like hell to make sure that i don't protect those circles from seeing their end for as long as I draw breath, yours included. From Esme, you see her absently kind of reach out for a walking stick beside her. Like she's searching for it. Take it and stand. Go. Mon, mon mère, you should, uh, you should visit with these poor children alone i think they seem to be taking your passing very difficultly i know it is a great burden for all of us to bear and she gives ensign a kiss on the cheek before using her walking stick to start moving towards the door the bird's head just watching you all as you as she, as it, she walks away. What do you do? I want a magic awareness again. It's all the same. Except the hair thing. There's no necromancy coming off of the eldest druid. Ascus is going to be ready ish. Um, there's a bird on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. I have a cat in my bag. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a cat that is technically my familiar and therefore I can talk to in his head. I tell pause. Pause. Do me a favor. Go chase the birdie. I want pause to go and fly towards the bird so I have an excuse to go over and help up 
Ideally, I want Paz to knock over uh, Esme, so I have an excuse to go help her up and see if I can't maybe uh, pickpocket something. See if there's something nice. in her pocket I can pickpocket. Okay, okay. You uh, say that's a pause. Pause bursts out of your bag, finds this bird, and flies toward it. The bird takes off into the air. Pause jumping on Esme's head and pushing her down to stumble as that happens. She screams and starts going like this. Uh, I rush over to catch her. And Seen almost laughs a little bit at suddenly this cat appearing, this flying cat appearing out of nowhere. And there's almost that little bit of wonder on her face you go to catch um oh, I'm, I'm so sorry i don't know where he gets these ideas from you stumble into esme make me a sleight of hand check as you grope i just this pick woman. A pocket and hope for the best uh-huh That's basically what i'm doing um i also give myself my self bardic so i get to add that d8 okay I moved yes. to block I moved to block the door. Okay. Okay, okay. You are on the other side. So I need if you're gonna are you doing this naturally or are you trying to like Well she's she's on the ground, right? She did not fall. She did uh, flail, she oh, did no. get knocked around, but she didn't fall. That's only but yay big. Okay. I, I was hoping to, like, use the distraction to place myself at the door so she couldn't just leave. So this is, you're going to need to get across the room really quickly. This is a big distraction. You give me stealth. Okay. You give me sleight of hand. What is your sleight of hand? Uh, 25. 25, with my, okay. With my bardic and everything. With your bardic and everything. What is your stealth? I got an eight. You got an eight. I can give you an extra D3. That's not going to help at all. You go to it. Do you want to try and pass it off as if you were just trying to get up to help? No, no, I think I'm done actually pretending. Okay. Um, A (laughs) rev. Look, the one thing that Arev has going for him, the one thing that he's had since the moment that he showed up in this game is that he is very situationally aware and his, like, wisdom has not been... Well, there's nothing to shake a druid stick at here. He's He's a very situationally wise person. And with the insights that he was rolling, even up to so much as the insight that, like, beat her role, whatever it Mm -hmm. was, he's deliberately going to block the door. He's not pretending anymore. Okay. You get up to block the door. You get a 25 to start grabbing on her to find a pocket and as just as you find a pocket with her 14 roll but 27 perception you get a whack on your hand from her walking stick as she shoves you back a lot stronger than you would expect her to be Mm -hmm. I need you Arev to make a dexterity saving throw because you need to get around Damascus, who's just been shoved a little bit backwards. A dexterity saving throw? Yes. Ugh, curse the painted side of my dice. I was like, yes. And oh uh, no, not one. Oh. Not one. Damascus careens back as you been shoved away into Orev, stopping him in his tracks. And Esme writes herself. Kind of Where is Gilly here? 
Where is Gilly here? Closer to the door or to the the lady? I mean, I would assume, I mean, where did Gilly place herself? I think Gilly would have placed herself in the back of our party. So, a rev went to the other side of the room, on on the other side of the bed. Uh, Esme is sitting right on, when you walk in the door to the bed, she's sitting right there. Uh, um, Roy was on the other side where you went. Uh, Damascus and Faza, you would have been probably at the foot of the bed. Yeah. Uh, Winter is mulling around there as well. Where did you place yourself? Not to be too convenient about it, but I feel like Gilly would have hung back closer to the door. So you're kind of just chilling. And she's currently being a fucking bouncer. She's being (laughs) a bouncer. The door is being bounced. (laughs) Okay. Okay. You... Oh, let's see. Let's see. If I get let's pushed see what back, Damascus is just, oh, all right. No need to be dramatic. <laughs> just trying to help you. Pause. Get down here. Stop chasing that bird. Uh, pause. Just pause lands on me. Lands on you. You see her bird fly around the room a little bit more. Sorry, I just need to check what one of her things is. For real, mm-hmm. though? Um, it's 40. It's <laughs> fucking a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, What was I looking for? You're making, you're being a bouncer. Yeah. What is your, what is your thing? What is your thing? You're, okay, that's not bad. I'm going to roll and we're going to see as she plays it off with a 19 as if she stumbles into you like she didn't know that you were there. Mm-hmm. And you hear a, oh, very, Mon dieu. Mon dieu. <laughs> Very rude. Who did you bring with you to see? Mm. Right? Ma'am, I don't think that we're dead talking to you personally. Oh, I think that I you don't. are. I don't think we are, actually. I don't trust you. And I don't think my friends trust you either. You see her, she just grabs blindly around her face as she is trying to see who's talking to her. She is playing this up, okay? And you hear the eldest druid go, This is a bit much, I think. May, with all due respect, I am uh, the muscle of this outfit. So uh, this lady doesn't get through until my friend Arev tells me that she gets through. And I don't think she gets through, personally. If you want my advice, Arev. <clears throat> you. <clears throat> this is this is Esme. You would presume to tell the eldest druid what to do in her own home? I'm not a druid. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Guards! What is guards? <laughs> oh my god! What are you doing, Arash? Um, I am calling her bluff. It's it's okay. time. Okay. So, I. Take a look back over my shoulder at Ensign, who is laying there on the table. And I say, You trusted me enough to send me into the world to find something that didn't exist. I'm opening uh, up her I'm opening up her character sheet. Continue. <laughs> I found far more than you sent me to look for. And as I say that, my body erupts in constellation as I assume my starry form of the dragon. <laughs> and with my 
constellations spreading across my back of the draconic wings. They rip spectrally out of my back and spread across the space that I'm standing in. And as I turn my head over to Esme, I look at her and with a deepening, growling, draconic voice, I say, I no longer trust you. And I'm going to hold my hand out and cast hold person. All right. What is that? What save is that? That is... I have I have so many rolls to make right now. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Gilly's officially no longer the muscle of this outfit. <laughs> um so you have to make a wisdom saving throw on my terribly disparagingly weak 17 save DC. Okay. 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 She is plus 7 to this roll. That's why I said it was weak. <laughs> Okay. We're gonna roll. We're gonna see. No, you were doing it. I could have cutting words to make her have to subtract the D eight. Oh, you're good. so your meets it beats it as she does not roll great. So she rolls um, a ten and she beats it as she you know sort what? of stumbles. Damascus into is feeling Gilly. very lucky at this moment. And would like her to try that again. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Ooh, ooh, okay. Nat one. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Hold person. What does this look like? Is it like vines and whatnot grow up her legs and begin to hold this woman? So the way that I picture it is more that... um, It's like, it, I already erupted into my starry form of the dragon, right? So mm-hmm. I, as I do this, as these wings, and I, I pull up my hand and I close my fist, um, from around my wrist, there are these motes that just cascade out uh, a, a small circle shaking um, or circling rapidly, rapidly, and then it erupts with a tail behind it. Uh, almost reminiscent of um, think like Ursa Major or Ursa Minor, like the mm-hmm. uh, the constellation. Except there's a secondary cuff, and as it comes around, the first cuff just comes up, and now she's trying to like ward herself off this. It clasps along her neck, and then the constellation wraps around her body until the secondary clasp clasps around her feet. And she's just rimmed with this, like, elegant constellation freezing her in place. Can I yes and that just a little bit? Go ahead. With a little bit of help that I put in. Okay. You've probably cast the spell before, and that is absolutely what it looks like. But if you look very closely, there is just the occasional little glowing butterfly circling around it for that mm-hmm. extra little oomph that Damascus put in to help it okay. Okay. knock into effect. Tell me, if you're cool are you that. still, you're, so you, you're a draconic, which means you can fly. Uh, yes. So, uh, not only do I have a flying speed currently, but, uh, whenever I make an intelligence or wisdom check, uh, or a con saving throw to maintain concentration on a spell, I can treat anything lower than a nine on a d20 as a 10. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you are not currently flying no okay she's was... caught as uh, and seen is this gonna fly you hear fuck it's not gonna fly that's a nat 20 okay um you hear guards coming and then and seen quicker than you would have thought her able and more powerful than you would have like thought casts a succession of spells the first one being um the first one being reverse gravity yeah. so uh everybody give me a dexterity saving throw oh boy we fucked up 12 12 that is a fail um 17 that also is 17. a fail that is a fail 
Oh God. The other two. Pays a roll the nineteen. Wait, that where's a where's fail. would Winter have been near me? Uh he would have been around the edge of yeah, probably around there. So then I would have had a twenty two. You just pass. Woo-hoo-hoo. And you did say that I got knocked into him, so mm-hmm. I would also get a twenty two. You just pass. You are able to grab on to something before the rest of everybody goes flying up through the air. And ah, oh, that is well, thirty feet. Ceilings. So hang on. Five, you take you take twelve bludgeoning damage as you hit the ceiling. Everyone <laughs> who didn't manage to grab on. Um. Along with that, fuck me. You notice that your constellation that is holding Esme gets dispelled. And she should not have been able to cast those spells as quickly as she did. Or with that strength. But Esme is now, or Ancine is now standing. What? are you doing? And she lets gravity go again. And everyone is going to bam, 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 fall. And you'll take another 12. Fair enough. And that little bit of power that she shows, you see her waver just a bit. And have to sit on the edge of her bed. Explain yourself to me, Arev, right now. I am attempting to protect you from yourself. At this point, there are guards coming into the room. And from this one, who we think is poisoning you. Yeah, did you know she uses necromancy? She's a necromancer. And do you think I do has... not? She looks at all of you. It's news to us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you think that I am not aware of the practices? You think that I cannot use them once this power was brought back into this world I give life and I can't take it away you think Lorraine Uh, could not do the same a rev smiles (laughs) a rev smiles Esme, and by the way, with her still fucking great performance check, cries as tears come down. She has a guard, another knight of Rhea, holding holding on to her. What do you what were you saying? And seen my eldest druid. Do you remember what you said to me when you sent me on my journey? Please enlighten me. The words that you christened me with when I became a knight in your realm. Or to believe 
what I know to be true. Above all else, to follow my truth and see it to its end. And my truth has led me here and believes, and he throws his arm out and points to Esme, says, believes that up until just a moment ago when we were here, that woman was killing you. And I don't believe that you would choose to die in this way. Boy, your truth is not always right. If you so much as druid craft in my house again, I will put you into this tree myself. Do you understand me? The rest of you. Get out. You, and she points at you, Arev, sit. Ily is very much waiting for Arev's mm -hmm. approval on this. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing is, I don't. Where is your sight, mother? Where is the wisdom that I came to trust that has, has guided and led our nation for millennia? Who are you? To tell me, in your defense, to sit. To tell me that my magic, in your defense, was magic wasted. To tell me that the truth you sent me in quest of is not always right. As if I am some young pup, to not understand that to believe in truth is not to discern for yourself one moment to the next the difference between what is and what isn't and what will come and what is not. You need to understand that you set me on this path and I will not sit for you now because I believe that you, for once, are short-sighted. The eldest druid looks incredibly frail at this moment. Arrive. Like she was willing for a moment there when she told you to sit to try and figure out why you were doing this. And now she is just tired and looking at you like you are just a pup. She is 7,000 years old. And she has seen things and knows of things that you'll never be able to comprehend. And there's this slight spark of disappointment. My boy. I do not doubt your heart. But I am still the eldest druid. And when I ask you to sit, you sit. My time is almost over. I see much. I see much. 
Give me an insight check. That's a 12. With a 12. And I'm not opposed to you adding a bardic. Uh, I throw a bardic his way. And yeah. I forgot I have bardic. And if I need to, you will see a butterfly to help you. I'll I mean. Look your way too if I need to. I can always give you that D3. You let me know what you want to do. <laughs> I technically can guidance myself. <laughs> I am not opposed to letting you shenanigans right now. Okay. I I need I need help. So I'm gonna take everything from everybody. Thank you. Okay. I will uh, I will not do it via butt pat this time, and that doesn't feel appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> For once. So with everybody's shenanigans, I managed to make it up to a D20. Right, okay. Like a dirty 20. The dirty 20. She knows that she's being poisoned. She knows that her life is being drained from her. She is fully aware of what is happening. And probably about what is happening to her people. And looks resigned to the fact that it has to happen in order for you to complete your destiny. Um, is a rev... A rev becomes aware of that. Mm -hmm. He walks forward towards you move and guards begin to move but she waves them away. There's a guard that's helping as a crying as may leave the room. They are also attempting to give you guys a moment of privacy if you want it to rev and lead the others to just outside the door. As before I take another step, I look back towards Gilly. And Arev's eyes, Gilly, seem to be a brilliant, almost luminescent hue. And you haven't you haven't spent too much time around him. But it's as if the irises themselves seem to be possessed by the light of a star as he looks back at you and the iridescent gaze simply looks at you and he tries to impress on you go and do not let that woman out of your sight he turns to Damascus Faza and Winter with the same look. And all he says is. I am counting. On all of you. That's just, just nods. In understanding. Faze has got a look on her face of. Oh I got this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um. As we turn to leave, I whisper to Faza and I just say, maybe as we're leaving, we should keep an eye on him in case we need it. he needs us. And she is going to do that thing where she can connect with you uh, psychically because it has a range oh, nice. of five miles. 
So if you need help, you can call out to her. He's a closer to you than the others. Grabs your hand really quickly and you feel her mind brush against yours so that she's there before heading off to follow Esme. So as her mind brushes mine and my gaze and my body turn and I let go of her hand, the thought that trails through her mind from mine as a parting thought is go find Roy's wife. Okay. Okay. And she's ushering Damascus out and Gilly out. Because, yeah, like, player moment, Um, like, the, the evil woman with the crow is the one that Roy was terrified of, who seems to have his the mother of his child. The, that just, a lot happened this session, but, like, I didn't lose track of that. <laughs> no, no, and, you did wonderfully. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was like, I'm like, hey, you're heading out. Don't let her go. <laughs> like, she's the quest line. She's the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> go yeah, get her. Walk, you okay. walk towards the Elder so, Druid. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I, Arev, walk towards the Elder Druid. She sits at the edge of the bed. I sit beside her. Mm -hmm. And I reach my arms around uh, around her and I pull her close. She feels like she's going to break almost and she has never felt frail to you. She puts her arms around you and pats your back very gently. Rev begins to cry. Oh, baby. She takes your head and puts it in the crook of her neck and she pats your hair and strokes your, her fingers through it. She says, endings are always tough. Listen to me because what I tell you now, bad things are coming. You will fulfill your destiny, Mon Amour. It will not be easy. I have maybe a day or two left. You will go through much in that time. And you, she has a tear that sort of falls onto your cheek. A new age is coming for Rhea with three very strong eldest druids, one of whom you need to meet. Trust me on this. You must meet her today if you can. Okay. Before, and she wavers, before the sun dies. You, do you mean for the day, Elder Druid? Or is there worry that the sun herself shall die? She gives you a kiss on your forehead.
it has to happen this way. Okay. Go and meet your daughter. Go and save my city. And then bring me all my granddaughters. For I wish to meet them all as my granddaughters. I will do what I can. I know. You are strong and you are brave. And you have nothing but goodness in you. Know that I have loved you from the day that you were born. What do you do, Rev? I wrap my arms just a little tighter and then I lay her frail body back down on her bed so that she can rest. You help her back into her bed, pull the covers up. She looks exhausted from that small amount of power that she's had to use. And she says, tomorrow, Roy will find her. I promise you, it all works out in the end. As you say, all this druid. I hate breaking your heart, and this is killing me. Um, she says, well then, I think... I think you should go to Wooden. It's be nice. And she looks at you like she can't believe that she's saying that. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, you know, on your deathbed, telling me to go to a brothel. That's okay. Yeah. I'll just get my jellies. No, just kidding. Go meet my daughter. Um, Arev. <sighs> I suppose it is time. And she I'll drew it crafts a lily to give to you. It resembles very much one that you've seen. Not the same colors, but is rem a remarkable resemblance to that blood lily. I hold it and I look at her and I look back. My favorite flowers. Do they mean anything special to you, grandmother? They mean to me the ability to let go. Thank you for the gift. And she closes her eyes to rest. And I think that's where we're going to call this session. 
the next week we'll find out if everybody else is brawling with guards in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next we will find out then. Um I'm full sobbing. It's fine. I hate having to be that person, but it's cool. Um we will see you guys next week. (laughs) I am I sneeze stars and I've been your shenanigan sovereign. Uh James. Hi. Uh I'm James, uh your resident heartbreak role player. Uh, tonight I played, um, uh, Arev Dezark, our human druid, uh, Circle of Stars, which is a personal favorite of mine. If you haven't played it, play it. It's a great freaking time. Um, yeah, let's talk about my alter ego some other day. Uh, Caro. Hi. Hello. I'm Caro. Uh, I have been Gilly Galene, the barbarian, who is back up. And is stressed on her friend's behalf. Daniel? Hi, everybody. I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. I have been Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock, who really wanted to pickpocket a cool beret. Um, yeah. Beret. Beret? Uh, Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before I let you leave, I insist on ending with something funny. So make sure you join us next week for the Iowan Adventures episode 69 where we visit a brothel. Nice! Oh my right. god! Yes. <laughs> He's done. He's done for the night. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Couldn't have played it better. <laughs> that... I just noticed. I'm sorry. That was great. Okay, no. No, that was great. I appreciate it. I feel a lot better. Uh, we are calling that episode Wouldn't It Be Nice? And um... <laughs> We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.